In this HVACR training video, we're going over an integrated furnace control board and its operation, and we're going to be using a connection wiring diagram as well as the gas furnace and all the components in the furnace in order to discuss its operation and therefore also the troubleshooting. Now, this basically what you have is electrical inputs and electrical outputs. It's fairly simple if you understand what all these terminals are supposed to be doing. And this particular circuit board also connects over to an ECM fan motor. So that is going to have 24 volt speed taps telling the fan motor when to turn on in its cooling fan speed and heating fan speed. So we're going to start off with the main power coming in, which is at L1 and L2. This whole box right here is the L2 common neutral bar. So that will be where all of your white wires go for a 120 volt gas furnace. And so then you're going to have your, your hot wire over here on L1. Now L1 is going to get uh, broken by this little door switch right here. So you have your power come into the door switch and then it's going to come out of the door switch and over to L1. And so if the door was open, then you're not going to have any power to the circuit board. But if it's closed like this, then you have a closed switch and therefore power to L1 and you're going to have 120 volts here. So then after that, you're going to have 120 volt power on the PR1 and also on L2. And that is going to go over to a 24 volt transformer. So it's 120 volt to 24 volt transformer. And that transformer is going to supply 24 volt power over here to SEC1 and SEC2, that's secondary voltage. And before that power can go anywhere, it has to go through this three amp fuse. So you're going to have your hot wire from the 24 volt uh, transformer go through this fuse over to R. And so it's also going to go through uh, safeties as well. And it's going to basically be able to uh, protect the transformer from, say, a direct short between, say, a 24 volt power and common or a ground, like a direct short of some sort, in which case it's going to open up this uh, fuse. It's actually going to pop the little uh, wire on the inside and it's going to open up the electrical circuit and it would also do this if there was too much power being drawn on the 24 volt components within the furnace. So say you added an extra transformer, you added extra components in this furnace, that could end up drawing excessive power which then may end up tripping that 3 amp fuse. Now I mentioned that the 24 volt circuit is checking for safeties between this fuse right here and where it comes as power on the R terminal. So just so you know, if you were to have an intact fuse and you were to measure with a multimeter between R and C, you would measure 24 volts because this is the, the common for the 24 volt circuitry. And then this is the uh, 24 volt power. But between here and here, this circuit board is actually monitoring several safeties. So on this circuit board, there's an 11 pin connector. And between the number six and the number eight, there is a connection to the flame roll out switch and the high temperature limit switch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, so right here, six and eight. Now, one of these is gonna be applying 24 volt power from here. It's going through the switches and then coming back on the either the six or the eight. And so if one of those switches are open, then the circuit board knows that we have a problem. It's going to flash an error code over here at the status code LED. And we have a whole other video on determining uh, status code lights for carrier, Bryant, and Payne furnaces. Uh, but basically, it's going to turn the fan motor on to try to cool off the heat exchanger if the high temperature limit switch is, is open. Also on this circuit board, even if this fuse was, was broke or out, this circuit board is still going to send uh, roughly 100 volts of power to the flame rod. And so this circuit board is always testing to see if there happens to be a flame and the flame will be completing the circuit between the flame rod and the, the burner retention head, which is the ground. And so it just wants to make sure that there's no fire, like there's no danger, there's no problem. And so it's always, as long as there's power in and it has its 24 volt power, it's going to be sending something a little bit less than 120 volts over to the flame rod and then the flame will convert that to uh, microamp uh, direct current uh, if there is a flame present which this circuit board would end up uh, sensing that on the ground wire. In this case the ground wire is on the fifth one so it's one two three four five right here. It's a shared ground with the gas valve but 
Uh, it's going to determine if there's a flame present by measuring a DC microamp signal on the ground. And we have a whole other video on testing for flame rectification down in the description section below. Okay, so getting back to things here, we have a BL1 and a neutral wire heading over to the fan motor. So you're always gonna have a, a hot wire, a common wire, and a ground over at the furnace blower motor. So it's always gonna be live. Anytime that there's power coming into the circuit board, you're gonna have power over at the fan motor. Now the fan motor is not gonna turn on until it gets a 24 volt uh, speed signal telling the, the furnace fan motor to turn on. So there is a another circuit board in the blower motor module. So these are say that the newer gas furnaces over the last say 10 years, the types of blower motors we had before were just a straight 120 volt uh, PSC, that's a permanent split capacitor blower motor and it required a capacitor to start. The newer blower motors are not like that, and in this case, it's referred to as a multi-speed or constant torque electronically commutated motor, ECM motor. So anyway, you're gonna have a common over there on the terminal of the fan motor, and then you're gonna be supplying that fan motor uh, with 24 volts on one of the five speed taps. And so those speed taps are programmed by the factory as far as how much air volume it's going to be blowing. You have three right here, a heat, a cool, and a fan. So maybe the cool tap is connected to the number five terminal and the heat tap is connected to the number, say, two terminal. So depending on what kind of blower motor this is connected to, it could be connected to, say, a broad ocean uh, fan motor where you just have the wires coming out of the, the motor module and connecting over to here with speed taps, or you could have uh, connectors from here over to a uh, Gentech X13 fan motor, which would then has uh, numbered uh, pin connectors, say one through five. But basically you're gonna have the cool tap right here connected to what will be programmed on the fan motor as a higher fan speed, and then the heat as the, the medium fan speed, and then the fan probably as the lowest fan speed. And then you'd have a couple other uh, terminals from the fan motor uh, connected over here to the spare terminals, which are just kind of parking spots so that there's no like back voltage or anything, any other problems, or there's no shorting of those extra speed tap wires. So if you were to jump from R to G on the circuit board, which is what happens in the thermostat when you go to turn the fan on, it's just connecting R and the G and it's sending 24 volt power to this G terminal. So the same thing can be done right here. It's just jumped. And so what's gonna happen is the circuit board's gonna send a 24 volt power on the fan terminal right here to the blower motor in order to run the fan motor, say at its lowest fan speed, just to circulate some air. If you were to jump between R and Y, then what's gonna happen is this circuit board's gonna send 24 volt power on the cool tap to the fan motor because it's gonna be running its, its motor on its higher fan speed for air conditioning mode. Now, a lot of thermostats are gonna be connecting both Y and G to R during air conditioning mode. And there may be a little delay in there, like a five minute delay if you were to turn the power off and turn it back on before the thermostat is able to send that 24 volt power to the Y terminal and the G terminal telling this uh, circuit board to send power to the fan motor at its highest fan speed. So that five minute delay in the thermostat is just a safety device just to allow the compressor and the refrigerant to equalize in pressure. Now, if you were to connect between R and W, what's gonna happen is it's gonna start the sequence of operation for heat to turn on. And so all the safeties have to be closed, high temperature limit switch, the flame rollout switch, and also the pressure switches have to be open. So the pressure switches are there just to prove that the inducer motor is running and also that the condensate line is not clogged. And so the very first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna have the inducer motor, which is right here, IND, on this circuit board. So you're gonna have your 120 volt hot right here and a common over at your inducer motor and it's gonna apply power, the circuit board's gonna apply power to that inducer motor. And then after that, it's going to look to see if the pressure switch is closed. So that's an air pressure switch. And so it's looking for a differential in pressure uh, applied by the inducer motor in the heat exchanger area in order to basically carry the exhaust out of that gas furnace. And so on this circuit board, the pressure switches are found between the third and the fourth pin. And so it's looking to see if those are closed as well. You have the two 
So between two and four, that's the low pressure switch. And then between three and four, it's gonna look for both the low and the high pressure switch to be closed. But if you just have a single stage gas furnace, really one is connected over to the, the condensate trap to make sure that that's not clogged. And the other one is connected right over to the inducer motor housing. So once those two are closed, then you're gonna have 120 volts applied over to the hot surface igniter. So you can see it right here, HSI, hot surface igniter, and that's over in the combustion box. And so you have a hot wire here and also a common wire. And so that's going to turn that hot surface igniter cherry red. And that's either gonna be a silicon carbide, which is the older style, or the silicon nitride, which is like a thin little blade right there. And that's just gonna turn kind of orange or cherry red. And that's there to help ignite the gas. So after the inducer motor is powered with 120 volts, the pressure switches are closed, then the hot surface igniter sends power to the HSI and, and it turns cherry red. And then the number 10 terminal right here, so 10 and five, are gonna be supplying 24 volt power over to the gas valve in order to electrically energize that gas valve and allow the either the natural gas or the propane to flow through to the main burners. So you'll notice that your 10 is your 24 volt power and your five is going to be the ground, but also the common wire for the gas valve. After that happens, your flame rod is always gonna be applied with 100, around, right around 100 volts. It could be like 80 to 120 volts or something like that. But basically then, so one, two, three, four, five. So on your fifth terminal right here, you're gonna be looking for a, a DC microamp signal proving that there's a flame. So it's proving that the HSI has ignited the gas coming out of the gas valve. And so if that does not occur, it's going to turn power off to the gas valve so it's no longer gonna supply 24 volt on this number 10 terminal here. But anyway, if there is a flame, then what's gonna happen is the heat exchanger is going to be heated up. So this circuit board is gonna wait maybe about 30 seconds before it's going to apply 24 volt power over to this heat terminal in order to send 24 volt power over to the fan motor module to turn the blower motor on. It doesn't wanna push cold air across the furnace. And so for an occupant in the building, just like the same temperature air that's in the building, if it's pushing across your skin, it's gonna feel cold. So it wants to wait for the heat exchanger to heat up and then it's gonna push that say 120 degree air out of the supply registers and heat up the building. After the thermostat has satisfied its call for heat, it's then going to disconnect the R to W and there's no longer gonna be 24 volts on that W. And remember with a multimeter, you can measure between W and C to see if there is 24 volt power on the W. But anyway, uh, if there's no longer a call for heat from the thermostat, it's then going to uh, no, no longer have 24 volts on the W. So then the number 10 terminal is no longer gonna supply power to the gas valve. And so the gas is gonna shut off. By the way, also that HSI is not powered the whole time. It's only powered during that startup when the flame ignites. But anyway, even with the gas valve off, the fan motor is still gonna have power. So you're gonna have 24 volt power over on the, the heat terminal right here and over to the fan motor. It still wants it to run because you wanna cool off the heat exchanger. So that's called the blower off delay during heating. And so in this case, you see it's heat off delay. And so there's a little selector right here for when there's the power off. So the technician can pull that jumper with the power off to that furnace and they can select if they want 90 seconds, 120 seconds, 150 or 180 seconds for that fan motor to run after the gas valve turns off. So basically it's a cool off period of that heat exchanger. So that's what that little jumper uh, selector right there is. So right now it's on 120 seconds so that fan motor would run literally for two minutes after that, that flame shuts off. And by the way, since we're talking about jumpers, this little J2 jumper right here, that's the cooling off delay defeat jumper. And with that removed, it should be able to turn the fan motor off right away anytime that you lose a signal on the Y you know, for air conditioning mode, but we are typically gonna leave that in because you want the fan motor to continue to run even though the compressor has shut off because maybe the, the indoor coil has water all over it and it's low in temperature and you just want that fan motor to run for that additional, say 90 seconds after that compressor turns off. So we just leave this jumper in place. So, you know, these little black boxes are typically little relays that are direct current uh, relays right here. And so they're just gonna have a set of contacts that either open or close. And so boxes like this are used for the 
HSI and the inducer motor in order to apply that 120 volt power uh, through the hot wire. So that's what those are. And so you know this EAC right here, uh, that's going to have 120 volt hot on it any time that the fan motor is running. So it's gonna be able to power an electronic air cleaner. So here's the common and here's the hot for the EAC. And so it only wants to be powering that when the fan motor is running. So it'll turn that off once the fan motor shuts off. If you wanna power a 24 volt bypass humidifier, you'd have your, your one wire here and then you'd connect over to the common. So you have your hot and your common for your 24 volt circuit going over to the small little electrical solenoid on the humidifier to allow the water to flow through anytime that the fan motor is running. And so it's going to turn that off when the fan motor shuts off. And over here between the test twin and the common, you can uh, recall your status error codes. And so right here you have a little LED. Sometimes you'll see it kind of extended off the board right here in different colors. Uh, but you can just follow in the manufacturer's literature for that. But like I said, we have a whole other video on reading status code lights in order to start your troubleshooting process and kind of have an idea of where to look for first. But the main object for troubleshooting is just to know what is this circuit board really supposed to do in a gas furnace. And if you know that and you know what the components are and what they're supposed to be doing and when they're supposed to be powered, you can effectively troubleshoot these gas furnaces as an HVAC tech out in the field. And head on over to acservicetech.com where we have our new second edition refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. And that covers all the new A2L refrigerants as well as our 410A refrigerant. And it covers all the procedures that you really want to know in a step-by-step -step and easy to understand manner. We also have our inverter mini split operation and service procedures book. And so that covers anything that you really need to know about single and multi-zone mini split systems, including both the refrigerant side and the electrical side. We also have articles, quick tips, calculators, and quizzes, so make sure to head over to acservicetech.com.